A Trofeo Pirelli race one then about to get underway as the uh, teams make their way off the uh, grid. And here is the grid in full for you. Bjorn Grossman going from P1, Nicolas Nielsen is P2. Vicente Pilda Liccio going from P3, then Henry Hassi P4. Best of the AMs is uh, Jack Brown going from P5. Sam Smith, the pro driver, is alongside him on the third row of the grid going from P6. Alessandro Vazzoni and Chris Froggatt share the uh, fourth row of the grid ahead of Jens Liebhauser and Fabian Volvend with Martin Nelson and John Sawbridge, who we saw uh, just a few moments ago going from P12 on the grid. Uh, then it's Christian Overgaard, uh, Pantelis goes from P14, then it's Dylan from P15, and Thomas O'Roca bringing up the rear of the grid, P16. All the information, of course, at the website, races.ferrari.com. Thumbs up from John Sawbridge then, always in the points thus far, and uh, he's contested only two races thus far. Very similar racing pedigree to that of Chris Froggart. Uh, in as much as um, he's gone away, got his license and come racing for the first time. Hasn't really got a huge racing history. Hi, I'm Sam Smith. I race for Stratstone Ferrari. Uh, this is my home track, so I'm really looking forward to giving it 100 percent and uh, bringing home some, some medals. <laughs> Well, well done to our TV production crew who actually got Sam Smith on camera. He's um, notoriously uh, difficult to get on the air, but uh, well done. Sam Smith then, again, uh, not the starting position that he would like, going from P6 on the grid is the third row. He would have uh, wanted to be a little bit further up the order than that, but we know that Sam Smith is a great overtaker and uh, will do his level best to um, vault him his way up the order from there. So, the race has effectively started. It, of course, has started behind the safety car. Maybe only one lap behind the safety car. Time will tell. We cross now to our racing correspondent alongside us, Callum Eilert, who will tell us what's going through uh, with this safety car restart, Callum. What has the driver got to do to put that car in the best possible position for when the race starts proper? Actually, that's the most professional name I've ever had, I think, title. Deservedly so, if I may say. Thank you. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Go and spoil it now. <laughs> yeah. With a safety car restart, um, you know, normally with a Ferrari Challenge, it's always a rolling start. What is it now that the drivers have to do to put that car into the perfect uh, position for when the race gets underway proper? I'm guessing try and generate some temperature into various areas. So the difference, obviously, between a uh, rolling start and the safety car start is that this is basically a single file. Yes. And it starts from the safety car line, which is actually a bit further back um, on this circuit than the start-finish line. Right. Um, and so obviously being single file, it's a sort of less aggressive start. Yes. Um, meaning that you're probably not going to have as many chances to overtake as you would as a, on a rolling start. Right. Um, but it's equally as important, especially with the wet weather, um, to get the temperature and brakes and tyres. Yes. And it, presumably it's much harder to get that temperature in there because the ambient temperature is much lower anyway. Yeah, um, obviously the wet tyres are a bit softer so it does help you um, oh, I see. Get, get the temperature and also they do tape up the brake ducts to get temperature in the brakes as well. Um, as is generally a lot, uh, generally a lot cooler than uh, normal. In the drive. That's a very workmanlike solution, isn't it? You tape up the ducts to uh, generate more temperature. It's easy. Simple. That's why we have a racing driver with us. You see, it gives us those little uh, little tips that perhaps we would not be aware of. On board with Chris Frogger, then it says P2. He's P2 in the AMs. He's actually uh, P8 on the grid. Uh, there you can see, uh, if you look to the left, you can see a dashboard there. It gives it a foot full of revs from third into fourth gear. A uh, paddle shift, of course, on these uh, 488 Challenge cars. Uh, first time that a turbocharged car has been used in the Ferrari Challenge since the introduction of the uh, 488. And each and every one of these cars, Callum, has got the uh, screen and the camera, so you can, you've got a really good, really good visibility of what's going on behind you. Yeah, that's quite good. I've not seen that before. Yeah, um, it was introduced into in this car alone. Okay. Yeah, no, it is useful, um, especially uh, more in the dry, actually, or, or closer to nighttime races. So. Yes. But uh, in the wet, I think with a lot of spray, it's not as easy to see behind. Oh, sure. 
So uh, Safety Car is uh, leading them through uh, turn 15 as we speak, heading down towards uh, Vale. Um, we have no notification that the safety car is coming in at the end of this lap, so I'm guessing that the safety car will do one more lap with the uh, cars, and it will gradually increase the pace a little bit to allow the drivers to uh, get some feel for the adhesion that is available to them out there on the track. Uh, we will see. I've been proved wrong in the past, and that was, will be proved wrong again, but uh, I suspect just one more lap behind the uh, safety car before the cars will be released to uh, start and race proper. The clock does continue to count down. The race has effectively started but of course absolutely no overtaking behind the uh, safety car uh, re remind you it's Bjorn Grossman and Niklas Nielsen going from P1 and P2 on the grid Niklas Nielsen who has won the first two races of this uh, Trofeo Pirelli uh, season and uh, Bjorn Grossman who's taken P2 P2s so he'll be very keen to get ahead of uh, Niklas Nielsen in terms of the result he's already ahead in terms of qualifying and has put himself in the best possible position and will be devilishly difficult may I suggest to overtake here at uh, Silverstone but we will see Niklas Nielsen is no slouch that's for sure by dint of his success that has already been proven single-seater uh, driver who Actually raced in tin tops as well um, in the Audi Sport TT Cup, and they made his debut in the uh, Ferrari Challenge. Uh, first uh, sort of, G first sort of uh, uh, GT racing that uh, uh, that uh, uh, Nicholas Nielsen has done, and acquitted himself very well here as uh, a driver for the uh, Formula Racing Team. The best of the AMS is this driver, number 90, uh, Jack Brown who, uh, representing Greypool Nottingham, has uh, raced Caterhams, which are a very different machine to, to the, I mean, Caterham, Callum, is, is almost like a cart, isn't it? It's a real, it's a two-seater open, open cockpit car, you know, it's as, it's as close to a single-seater or a cart as you're going to get, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you can really slide it around quite a bit, um, whereas these with the downforce, obviously, it's a lot harder. Once you break the air that you have, um, yes. you, you basically spin instead of slide. Um, right. Whereas a caterer, you can really, really push it. So it's quite a fun car to drive. Too. I have to say, I put one through its paces at Dunsfold Park going back a few years ago, and boy, was I quick. A safety car is coming in this lap. If only you could see the look on Callum's face. A safety car is coming in this lap, so the race will be underway. So the lights will go out on the safety car, and it's going to be Bjorn Grossman that will lead them away from Nicholas Nielsen, Vicente uh, Potaliccio, then it's Henry Hasid, and uh, Jack Brown so I was right with that prediction then two laps behind the safety car before the cars will be released to race and we will have around about 24 minutes or thereabouts left on the race it'll probably be 23 minutes by the time the safety car the lights go out now uh, the cars are on the hangar straight heading up towards uh, Stowe and is there a particular corner here at Silverstone Callum in your relatively short racing history but utterly successful racing history that you consider your favorite corner here at Silverstone um, for me, it's actually a sequence. Maggots and Beckett's in yes. this Formula car is incredible. Okay. One of the fastest flowing sequences I've ever been in. There you go. Right. So, the cars then, the safety car, as you can see, has peeled off. So, it's going to be Bjorn Grossman, Nicholas Nielsen, then Potaliccio, then Henry Hasid, and uh, Sam Smith, and uh, Jack Brown as they all head towards the uh, safety car line. And once they've crossed the safety car line, the race is away and proper. And Bjorn Grossman gets himself a little bit of comfort space between himself and Nicholas Nielsen. Nicholas Nielsen already under a bit of pressure from Polaliccio. Here comes Sam Smith then in car number 92, already trying to make his moves. Sam Smith knows the Silverstone circuit particularly well. So Sam Smith already in car number 92, dives up the inside of Jack Brown and he's going to go through. So a good overtake straight away from Sam Smith. Now finds himself behind the Henry Hasid car. So Henry Hasid is uh, with uh, Sam Smith for company right behind him now. So Sam Smith finds himself up to P5. Here's the race leader, Bjorn Grossman. Niklas Nielsen, I have to say, he looks like he's under a little bit of pressure from Podoliccio, which means that uh, out front, Bjorn Grossman is relatively untroubled. Chris Frogger now trying to get past uh, uh, the number 90 brown car and uh, Chris Frogger does go through as well. There's uh, Alessandro uh, Vetsoni. He's uh, fighting Henry Hasid. Uh, Sam Smith has gone through on uh, Henry Hasid. So Sam Smith finds himself up to P4. Chris Frogger, another driver that is on a charge at the moment as they go through the uh, old pits complex here at uh, Silverstone and uh, turn into uh, the cops. 
corner and head towards that uh, favourite uh, sequence of turns of Callum Islet. Maggots, Beckett sequence, turns 10, 11, 12, 13. And of course, Chapel is turn number 14. And once you're through Chapel, you're on to the hangar straight. So Bjorn Grossman, car number 84 for Octane 126, leads. He has 22 minutes of this race and makes his way on to uh, the hangar straight right now. The man on a charge is uh, Sam Smith. He's going to be very interesting to watch as he tries to carve his way up the order. But already, Bjorn Grossman has put 2.3 seconds on Niklas Nielsen running in uh, P2. Fastest of that group of four at the moment is Sam Smith, who is on his way. Alessandro Vetsoni's looking very quick as well, but he's still got to get past Henry Hasid. He goes for a move now. Here's Sam Smith then in the all-yellow car. Henry Hasid, as you can see, has got Alessandro Vetsoni all over the back of the car at the moment. So Vetsoni tries to take a look at the inside, but Hasid is able to carry more speed. There's P2, P3, and P4. So Hasid under pressure from Alessandro Vetsoni at the moment, the uh, number 47 car. Let's go on board. There's a replay then. And uh, you can see from being on board with uh, Chris Froggart here, getting past uh, Jack Brown in car number 90. From sixth down to fifth, he's got the inside line. Alessandro Vetsoni there ahead. And you could, all, you could just see uh, Sam Smith going past Henry Hasid as well at that point. So great to see that replay. Jon Grossman, 2.4 seconds. He's the fastest car out there on the track at the moment. Of course, he's got a completely clear track ahead of him. And here comes Chris Froggart on Alessandro Vetsoni. Now here, Vetsoni is going to have to change his mindset from attacking Henry Hasid ahead to defending against Chris Froggart. Bjorn Grossman slides the car beautifully, holds on to it. Sam Smith already is on the back of uh, Podolicchio. So in the AM standings, it's uh, Froggart, Brown and Nelson. In the pro standings, it's Grossman, uh, Nielsen, Podolicchio. This is uh, Christian Overgaard in car number 45, the uh, Baron service driver. Uh, Christian Overgaard, who's in uh, P13 at the moment, car number 84. Bjorn Grossman, our race leader for Octane 126. And to be fair, he is just getting about doing his job extending his margin between himself and uh, Niklas Nielsen. It was uh, 2.7 seconds last time around. Sam Smith still not able to uh, dislodge uh, Podolicchio at the moment. So there is our P2 driver, Niklas Nielsen, and this is the uh, big battle that's going on. It's the battle for P3 at the moment. So the British driver, Sam Smith, who knows Silverstone like the back of his hand, has got the advantage in that respect over the number 85 car of Vicente uh, Podolicchio, the Rosso Corsa racer. And this is Henry Hasid continuing to be chased down uh, by the Alessandro Vetsoni car. And just behind Alessandro Vetsoni is the other British driver, Chris Froggart, who's leading the AM class at the moment. So. He is in P1 in class, but is uh, P7 in uh, the race overall. This was the sideways moment from Bjorn Grossman. Callum, that was beautifully controlled, and it didn't look like it cost him a huge hunk of time. No, it was really good driving. So far, he keeps pulling away, so to me, he's doing a very good job. Well, high praise indeed from Callum Eilert. Henry Hasid, meantime, is having to defend, and that is allowing... Chris Frogger to really get into this uh, battle. So we've got three cars that are uh, fighting over this P5 position at the moment. There is Alessandro Vetsoni in the number 27 car before we see Chris Froggart in car number 93 ahead of uh, Jack Brown, fellow AM driver who's uh, P2 in that class at the moment. 18 minutes of the race remaining. We're live from uh, Silverstone as Chris Froggart flashes his lights furiously at Alessandro Vetsoni in the hope of just Alessandro Vetsoni's focus being distracted for a millisecond, which of course would be enough, potentially, to give Chris Froggart the slight advantage and being able to find a way past the number 27 car. At the moment though, and I have to say, Vetsoni is not one generally for making mistakes, he's not been able to find a way by. So there is Hasid through the murk and the spray. Uh, all the cars come in this, their first race of two over this weekend. Henry Hasid, Alessandro Vetsoni. There, though, is the Octane 126 driver, Bjorn Grossman, back out onto the hangar straight once again, who is leading this race. 
Is Niklas Nielsen getting marginally closer to him, Callum? Looks like it. I think he's pulled in a little bit at that. But, yeah, definitely in sector two, he's gained a lot more. Thank you. Vicente Pulliccio then and Sam Smith continuing this battle for P3. At the moment, Sam Smith has not been able to uh, unsettle Vicente ahead of him. Uh, as I said, going into this, Sam Smith has got uh, a great deal of experience here at the Silverstone circuit. Incidentally, Nicholas Nielsen was uh, fastest in Sector 1 and Sector 2. And here comes Alessandro Vezzoni on Henry Hassi then. Just took a look at the inside. We'll try and go underneath the car now through this uh, sequence of turns. Need to get very, very good traction out of here. And that was a good setup by Alessandro Vezzoni. A good overtake there, who just he lulled um, Henry Hasid into a full sense of security. And he got it all set up for the club turn, Callum. That was a good overtake. Yeah, he planned it well, also getting great traction out of the corner. Uh, you have to be careful, though, because a bit onto the straight, and sometimes not flat out especially in the wet. Really? So, yeah, I think he did a great job, especially being on the inside there, to make it stick. Well, well done to uh, Alessandro Vezzoni then. So Chris Froggart lines up now. And Chris Froggart is coming back into um, perhaps potential problems with uh, Jack Brown, who he, he got past Jack Brown earlier on in uh, the race. But now Froggart needs to dispose of Henry Hasid if he can fairly early doors here um, because it looks like uh, for my money Jack Brown is looking very menacing here in the all red number 90 car both British drivers Chris Froggart uh, ran just a little bit wide there and Jack took a look at the inside but I didn't have the momentum to do anything about it but all of a sudden Froggart's having to defend here Callum yeah I mean they're both driving very well especially for being amateurs in the class um, but yeah, to be, uh, I think in Silverstone, it makes it a bit easier for them as well, being British, but. Okay, Ed, does it, does it give you a tenth or two? I think so. It's yeah, a very okay. difficult circuit, so any advantage you have. Yes, helps. Well, at the moment, he is sticking his elbows out, and uh, we just saw a replay of that brilliant overtake from Alessandro Vezzoni, and now Alessandro Vezzoni has been released from the Henry Hasid car. He's able to make his way up the road. Uh, Nicholas Nielsen is continuing to gain. Callum, last time around, he did a, a faster lap by almost a second than Bjorn Grossman. Yeah, he's definitely catching. I think uh, two laps ago, the gap was at three seconds, and now it's at 1.5. So we should see in a lap or two a little fight, I think. Yeah, uh, Bjorn Grossman is a wily driver, and uh, uh, just wonder whether he's uh, just playing the, playing the long game here um, and whether he's got a little in reserve. But we will see. There, you can see it's very visible on screen now how much closer these two are uh, for P1 and P2. But Callum, it's all very well. You can get on the you can get on the back of someone, and you can be as quick or quicker than someone. They're not going to indicate left and allow you to come through, are they? No, it's, uh, it is especially difficult to overtake if someone does close the line. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, Grisman will do a good job of that as soon as Nicholas comes up I think behind you're right. him. Well, we will see. This is uh, over the final 14 minutes of this race. Oh, I tell you what, it's just joyful to watch Bjorn Grossman power slide that car yeah, through that really turn. really pushing it, really pushing it. But it shows you that a corner like that coming onto the straight is not flat out easily. No, no, that's a very fair point you make. Um, well, for my money, it's uh, just great to watch. A 216.469 last time around for Bjorn Grossman, a 216.090 for Niklas Nielsen. So there are the standings on the left-hand side. The little red flash means they're pro drivers. The white flash or silver flash means that they are AM drivers. Uh, Grossman, Nielsen, Polaliccio haven't moved at all, but up two places, Sam Smith. Also up two places, Alessandro Vezzoni. Going down, going up. Well, the graphics there were indicating who's who. And uh, Bjorn Grossman now, you can see, from 3.164 it's come down to 1.660 the margin between the octane 126 driver and the uh, formula racing driver niklas nielsen i think this could be a nice fight to the finish with 13 minutes left uh this could be uh, this could be really quite fraught now niklas nielsen is upping the ante isn't he? he's throwing that car around a bit more now uh, they make their way out of uh, turn number 14 the chapel turn and on to the uh, hangar straight I think Nicholas definitely took it a bit too easy at the start. Do you think? Yeah. Why would you do that, Callum? You wouldn't do that, would you? Uh, You're flat out from the start, aren't you? It depends also, because if you run different tyre pressures, the lower you are, the, uh, okay. the harder it is at the start. So maybe it was just taking it easy to get through the first few laps and then, then push. 
Like, You've raced against Nicolas, haven't you, in karting? Yeah, and he always pushed it. So, did you beat him? Uh, it, it, actually, to be fair, it was very, very close. So, I think a couple of races he would be in front, a couple of races I'd be in front. It's very diplomatic of you and most unlike you, if I may say. Uh, Henry, really nice. <laughs> Henry Aseed, Chris Frogger and Jack Brown are still involved in this uh, big battle that's going on for P6 on the road. Um, uh, Chris Frogger and uh, Jack Brown, of course, P1 and P2 in the AMs, as you can see, with Martin Nelson P3 in the AMs, but he's some way back. And of John Sawbridge and Christian Overgarden, uh, Dylan is uh, P6 in the AMs at the moment, but... Henry Hasid is proving more difficult to overtake for uh, Chris Frogger than he was for Alessandro Vezzoni, who, as you can see, has escaped up the road. But Frogger is uh, trying every which way but loose to try. But <laughs> trouble is, Callum, as you're trying to attack someone ahead, you don't want to leave yourself vulnerable to an overtake from somebody who is right behind you. you. You're hunting, but being hunted at the same time. That's blooming difficult, isn't it? Yeah, but if you feel you've got the pace over them, you've got to go for it. OK. So, yeah, you've got to be wary as well. Well, absolutely. And uh, at the moment, there has been, uh, you know, Frogger has been able to contend with it nicely, but he has not been able to find his way past uh, Henry Hasid. Henry Hasid, of course, hugely successful in the uh, Ferrari Challenge last year. He's taken a P3 and a P5 thus far this year, so he's had one podium. And uh, at the moment, he is uh, P6. So uh, they head towards the uh, cops' turn now. And we're into ten and a half minutes of the race remaining. There's Jens Liebhauser. We're being chased down by Fabienne Volven, the uh, lady racer who's currently running in P8. Uh, carries the distinction of being the only lady racer that has ever won uh, Ferrari Challenge race outright. That win coming in Imola last season. I don't know if you just saw that, but the right front brake, um, the number 81 car, yes, completely red. Yeah, blowing hot. So. I, I, and that's something that you know you see an awful lot in dry conditions, less so in the wet conditions, because of course it's cooler, isn't it? But yeah, that's why I pointed it out. They're really bit, pushing, aren't they? Yeah, it's not normal in a way to see that, but obviously they're they're really really pushing it hard. Well, uh, Fabian Volven is pushing because she goes up the inside of uh, Jens Liebhauser. And that was a good overtake from Fabian Volvend, and Jens Liebaz was trying to come back now by being all over the curbs in the runoff area. I, I think he was caught napping a little bit there as he goes through, but now Fabian Volvend is able to fight back again. This is a real battle going on. They're using the curbs, grass, bits of gravel, you name it, they'll have a go anywhere. But Fabian Volvend, oh, there's almost contact between the two of them. That was around the uh, final turn, the club turn, turn number 18, Callum. Wow! No, that was a bit more aggressive than I was expecting, but no, really. Well, it looked like the original overtake, it just looked like Jens was caught napping. Yeah, no, yeah, the original one, yeah, but then going into, uh, what was the last one? Club turn? Yeah, no, into Vale. Oh, sorry. That was a very opportunistic. <laughs> yes, it was a bit, wasn't it? it ain't all over yet, look, because uh, Fabienne will now be uh, furious that she'd done a really good overtake, got past, and then, um, well, uh, Jens was quite physical, it has to be said, but took everything he could to try and come back and did come back. So uh, the places got changed, then reversed. Yeah, when you made a good move and you don't expect someone to come back on you straight away. No, so I think. Here it is. Talk us through this, Callum Well, on the inside, taking the opportunity, obviously. And I, I simple, really. Seemed too easy. Yeah, simple. But then, because it's been so easy, and then going into the next section, yes. straight back in. Yes. <laughs> Very aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> but you can you can do that at parts of Silverstone, can't you? Obviously. Well, quite. It was proved to us there. Thank you. Um, look at this. You said you you may recall I said earlier on whether Bjorn had got just something a little in reserve there, and he was playing a little bit with Niklas Nielsen. Um, the gap is back to 2.2, and uh, uh, Grossman has just posted the uh, fastest lap at 2:15.622. Yeah, I think he looks quite comfortable now. Um, Nicholas isn't really catching or uh, I think he's maintaining the yeah. also. Uh, lighting up the front brake discs is uh, Sam Smith then in the number 92 car in his quest for Vicente uh, Podoliccio. It's the battle for P3. Sam Smith, of course, you know, it's something very, very special, Callum, to win a race at your home circuit, but to get a podium if you can't win the race is, is almost as good. It's certainly far better to be on the podium than not at your home race, isn't it? Yeah, you want to try and get every position you can, and if it's on the podium, even better. Yeah, well, Sam Smith has got seven and a half minutes in which to try and uh, overcome the uh, Vicente Pololiccio car ahead of him. 
at the moment, uh, he's not close enough. There's nearly a second between the two of them. Um, Sam Smith does not seem to be uh, close enough to mount a charge, but expect him to try over the uh, final few laps of uh, this race, perhaps. Uh, what happens to wet weather tyres, Callum? Are they like um, are they like uh, slick tyres in terms of their wear rate? Do they drop off a cliff or are they more consistent? Um, every tyre is different. Um, I think with Pirelli's, uh, there'll be a peak in a way. Yes. And um, if you do go over that temperature peak and yes. you push a little bit too hard, they will drop off. Um, so I think these guys have got to be a bit wary and maintain um, maintain the pace and not not try and push too hard, but. I think I've seen some of the guys sliding in that, so obviously the, the tyre's holding up quite well because they're yes. still posting fastest laps at the moment. Yes, you're right. In this late stage of the race, that's uh, that's often not the case, isn't it? Yeah. You do see sometimes when the track begins to dry out, and that certainly isn't going to be the case here, where to keep the wet, wet weather tyres within their operating window, you're kind of searching on the track for, cold, for wet places, aren't you? Yeah, so say if the track was a bit drier now, uh, mm. I would go down the straight and try and find the puddles and right. get them back and cool, cool them down. But right now the track's still wet enough across the whole circuit to, sure. to just stay in the line that you were doing. Okay, here comes P1 and P2. It is uh, Bjorn Grossman and Niklas Nielsen. And the last time around, Niklas Nielsen was marginally quicker. Bjorn Grossman goes through the speed trap at 254 kilometers per hour in the number 84 Octane 126 car. The margin between P1 and P2 is 2.152 seconds. So uh, Bjorn Grossman then slows the car only using the wipers now on intermittent mode because of course he's leading and he's got uh, uh, very little spray from anyone else ahead of him unlike uh, um, Niklas Nielsen there who have got it on constantly obviously so here is uh, Bjorn Grossman in uh, car number 84 Niklas Nielsen it was 2.214 as I said and uh, well the Formula Racing and Octane 126 drivers remain the same margin between the two of them now. Five minutes remaining in this first of the Trofeo Pirelli races here at Silverstone this weekend. Now, uh, tomorrow is predicted, and please don't let me influence this or affect this in any way. Tomorrow is uh, predicted to be dry. Um, how much difference will the engineers have made to these cars to make them... Um, absolutely at their best in the wet and will they have a lot of work to do uh, potentially to try and change these cars into a dry weather setup at uh, Callum so generally uh, generally um, when you go from the wet to the dry uh, the wet you run the car a lot higher uh, right. to stop the aquaplaning and hitting the water um, so they'll lower the car being one of the first things probably stiffen the suspension a little bit because um, you do run softer don't you in wet yeah. Yeah, um, and I think just generally uh, little things like that, especially with the tyres, uh, you'd have to run obviously different tyres yes. with a completely different tyre pressure. Um, other than that, I think obviously the engineers will have their specific little tricks yes. that they will, they will play, um, but those are the general things that you do. Cheers, Callum. So, uh, over the closing stages of this race, what can Chris Froggatt do with Henry Hasid ahead of him? He's thus far been able to do absolutely nothing and has not been able to get past Henry Hasid. He made some good overtakes right at the start of the race, but the Charles Ponce driver, Henry Hasid, has got everything in uh, seemingly all under control because uh, Chris Froggart has not been able to find a way past or even, to be fair, get close enough to try and look. But now, Chris Froggart, with only three and a half minutes of the race remaining, knows that he's got to push and push hard now. Henry Hasid, old wily driver who's been racing for many, many years, will be very aware of the fact that Chris Froggart is trying to uh, push him and provoke a mistake by flashing his lights and uh, ensuring that the Henry Hasid rearview mirror is full of that uh, Chris Froggart car. On to the hangar straight they come now. This is the battle that is uh, going on in the race for P6. Chris Froggart is leading the AMs ahead of uh, Jack Brown, but for the pride of being uh, one place further ahead, that is what Chris Froggart is uh, chasing for and chasing down Henry Hasid. He's far enough ahead probably of Jack Brown at 1.4 seconds that he hasn't got to worry too much for his P1 position in the AMs with uh, just under three minutes of the race remaining. Bjorn Grossman is maintaining the lead gap with uh, a 2.61 margin into the octane 126 uh, garage we go then it comes uh, Jens Liebhauser and who's that right behind it Fabian Volvend once again 
So in the closing stages of this race, it's Fabian Volvend uh, going to wrestle back what, in her opinion, is uh, that P9 place. Well, we will see. So Fabian Volvend, we were just in the garage of the team that uh, engineer her car, Octane 126. If we know that they uh, engineer a good car for her. Uh, Jens Liebhauser in car number 44, who is... Uh, Last year's Trofeo Pirelli Am champion, elevated to the uh, pro category for, for, for this season. And uh, Fabian Volven just dives out of the... Uh, well, there's not so much spray now. And uh, there is uh, John Sawbridge, who's being chased down now by uh, Christian Overgaard. John Sawbridge running in uh, P12, but actually is uh, P5, uh, P4. Apologies in the Am class ahead of uh, Christian Overgaard. There you can see confirmation it is the battle for P4 between John Sawbridge and Christian Overgaard. That battle in the AM class. So John Sawbridge then in car number 39, who we saw from and heard from right at the start of the uh, program today, is uh, having to defend quite heavily now from uh, Christian Overgaard, whose uh, Baron service car is all over the back of uh, uh, John Sawbridge at the moment. So uh, into the old uh, National Pit Straight. Well, it's not an old National Pit Straight. It is the National Pit Straight. You can just see the Martin Nelson car go through on uh, in our uh, picture there. He's running in P11, but running P3 in the AM. So he'll be banking a podium out of this. And uh, Christian Overgaard in car number 45. John Sawbridge at the moment got the measure of him. Who's doing what where? Well, uh, Grossman and Nelson are on the last lap now and are lapping at almost identical times and uh, Bjorn Grossman has now got 2.7 seconds of margin. That car, the blue and green machine you can see center screen is Martin Nelson who at the moment is occupying uh, P3 in the AMS, is uh, P11 in the race. Then it's John Sawbridge and uh, Christian Overgaard. John Sawbridge then through the speed trap at 249 kilometers per hour. Bjorn Grossman then, who did all the hard work in qualifying and, and posted a remarkable uh, qualifying result by giving uh, pole position. And whoa, Christian Overgaard has to dial in some opposite lock. Now there, Callum, did the, does the car just step out like that or did he provoke that? What did he do wrong to make that car go sideways? Um, normally it's a little thing like just jumping off the brakes a little bit too much and running right. too much speed in. Um, just snapped away, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. This is Bjorn Grossman then, who is heading towards the chequered flag. It'll be his first win in uh, Trofeo Pirelli this season. We know what a good driver he is. He's been up against Niklas Nielsen in the opening round at Mugello and failed to overcome. But here in Silverstone, Bjorn Grossman, who has been faultless from the off, will round the final turn and will head towards the uh, chequered flag. The Octane 126 driver is on to the hangar straight now. He has about four, five more turns to do before he can see the chequered flag in sight. Niklas Nielsen has chased for all his worth including uh, a very fast sector one but it's all going to be to no avail and once again Bjorn Grossman is just, he's just on the opposite it. lock he's, he's providing a great show for us in terms of his driving he needs to not make a mistake now though because uh, Niklas is still there ready to pounce but he has done enough Bjorn Grossman for Octane 126 will take his first win this season the checkered flag falls on car number 84, takes the win from Niklas Nielsen, P2. Uh, Vicente Podolicchio will be uh, heading towards uh, P3. Sam Smith tried very hard to uh, get past the number 85 car, but you can see he's dropped away significantly now. Sam Smith takes uh, P4. Then it's going to be Alessandro Vetsoni and uh, Henry Hasid, all those uh, pro drivers occupying uh, the top six places. Before we see... Chris Froggart and uh, Jack Brown, who are P1 and P2 in the AMS. Then it'll be Jens Liebhauser, we think, ahead of Fabian Volvend. Yes, Jens Liebhauser crosses the line ahead of Fabian Volvend. And P3 for the AMS is going to be uh, Martin Nelson, uh, who will actually take uh, P11 in the race in the end, or will he? Because uh, John Sawbridge is with him now. But I think, John, that probably it's all been left a little bit too late, or has it? Uh, Nelson to the outside, but he's able to carry more momentum through, and uh, he does uh, take that uh, podium place in the AMS. So uh, there we have it then.
race one for Trofeo Pirelli done and dusted. What a good race that was. Enjoyed that no end. Particularly the sideways showing of uh, Bjorn Grossman as he was sliding that car all around the track. It was uh, phenomenal for us to watch. Absolutely great stuff. So we're going to take a look at the uh, clip of the uh, challenge show to music in just a few seconds from now as the cars make their way to Parc Ferme. So good to enjoy that uh, challenge show clip then as the cars make their way uh, back into the uh, Park Ferme area. Confirmation of the top three in both categories then. In the pros, Grossman, Nielsen, Porolicchio, and in the AMs, Froggart, Brown, and Nelson. The one, two, three in each of the classes then. Uh, AMs and uh, pro drivers. There behind the uh, P1 sign is uh, Bjorn Grossman. So two rows of cars, of course, the uh, pro cars and the AM cars as well. Chris Froggart uh, being congratulated there.